another year, another Apple event, but this year's was a little underwhelming, if you ask me. Hello, it's Steph here from Technuovo, and I thought I'd make this video to run through all of the highlights that were just announced in this year's Apple event. And we got a new Apple Watch, a new set of AirPods, and some new iPhones. So I'm just gonna run through my notes on the screen that I've actually made here. It's just gonna be a very casual video this time around. Apple first started out with their new set of iWatches. They talked about how the iWatch has saved a bunch of lives. Someone read a story about having a heart attack. Someone got stuck under the ice while they were ice skating on a lake. Uh, and someone got stuck in a dump truck or like those refuse trucks that come and collect your rubbish. Someone got stuck in there and their lives were saved because of the iWatch. Apparently it is the number one seller as well, which makes sense. I think for smartwatches anyway, Apple probably do have that corner of the market covered. So the new watch that was announced today was the Apple Watch Series 8 and it has an always on display. There are no borders around the frame so it looks very, very seamless on the wrist which sounds quite nice Have just having literally a watch face. They've designed new watch faces for it. It's got a brighter display. It's swim proof. It's dust and crack resistant but I don't really know how truthful that is because every single broken device in these high street mobile repair shops seems to be, seems to be iPhones anyway but uh, I would like to see what happens to one of the new iWatches after or the Apple Watch after someone drops it. It's got some new and uh, improved sleep tracking and it's also got cycle tracking on there as well. Now I'm not going to pretend that I know anything about this but the Apple Watch does feature a new temperature sensor for women's health stuff, improving cycle tracking, and it now tracks ovulation as well. So moving on to the car crash detection that I've got written down, notifies emergency services and provides location and also uh, tells your contacts as well, your privacy contacts, they said, which is basically your next of kin uh, or a, a carer, for example, if you're uh, a child or in someone's care, it gives them a notification as well to say that you have been in an accident. I believe they didn't show much of it, but it looked as if there was some kind of 10 second countdown so you can react to your watch. If you're okay, you can click the watch and say, yes, I'm fine, don't call the emergency services. I'm not sure if that can be extended because I think if you're in a, an extremely serious car crash or for example, you've just fallen off your bike, if you're out cycling and you're not that hurt, while you're brushing yourself off, you're going to have to remember to hit that notification on your watch every time. Maybe I know extending that time could be a little bit dangerous because if you are seriously injured, then okay, you're not going to want to wait an entire minute before an, an emergency service is notified. But uh, there are two new motion sensors, a three-axis gyroscope, gyroscope sorry, and a barometer. Uh, that can track 256 Gs, which is four times faster. Uh, it said a four times faster barometer. You've got a microphone on there and GPS. So they said that the watch has an 18 hour battery life now, which has improved over last year's watch. And it's also introducing now a low power mode, which means that it puts the watch into some kind of low power like state, I suppose. Disables features to save battery like the always on display. It turns that off completely. It does keep your tracking data going though because of course it does. They want to track your data. <laughs> but um, it does, they have claimed that uh, the battery life will go up to 36 hours if you do keep it in low power mode. So if you are out and about and you haven't got a charger, whack it into low power mode and that will extend your battery life by double. It also comes now with international roaming. So that means that it's gonna be able to connect to cellular networks abroad with little to no cost they're claiming. But of course, with anything now uh, related to international roaming charges, please check with your, your, your provider first because of course, if you are abroad, you just do not wanna get absolutely slapped with a huge bill because you're using your data on your Apple Watch. Uh, even though they says they said it's uh, to little or no cost, but I do not believe that for a second. They do come in four colors, black, silver, bronze, and red. They did have, 
a fancy name for them all, but it was essentially black, silver, bronze, and red. That's the colors. That's what they looked like. There are also fancy versions if you want to go stainless gold. I called it stainless gold, but it was like a very shiny gold, uh, silver, and graphite colors, which was like a very dark gray. You've got loads of bands. There's been an update to the Nike bands with new colors and the Nike Just Do It branding. There are were Hermes. I want to call it Hermes uh, bands for some styling, which looks like really fancy bands. One was like this nice leather strap and another one looked like a chain. But, uh, but yeah, they were fancy, fancy bands. Not, so, not sure of the cost of those, but uh, if that's a bit of you, then go for it. The watches start at $399 for the GPS version and $499 for the cellular version. You do get three months of Fitness Plus free with that. They also introduced a, another new Apple Watch called the Apple Watch Ultra. And they said that that was a new rugged style for those adventurers out there who like diving underwater or running across the Sahara Desert or climbing mountains. Or It looks exactly the same as the other Apple Watches. Although when they did do their rolling demo and their B-roll and their fancy shots, it did look a lot chunkier on the wrist, which I quite liked. The actual Apple Watch Ultra itself made from titanium. They said it was aerospace grade. Not sure ex exactly what that means, but it probably just means that it's ultra tough. Also, a sapphire front crystal face for protection. The case is 49 millimeters, which probably is probably why it gets it got looked a lot chunkier um on, on their wrist when they were demoing it it's the brightest display ever on an apple watch they said actually what was interesting was there was a physical action button which looked really as I was, i'm gonna say it was a chunky watch and it had chunky features but the action button was pretty chunky but it was designed to be this one action button to be able to perform different actions when you are inside of the various apps so they showed off a diving app where you could click the action button and it came up with your depth um depth gauge and a compass so you knew where you were the the crown they called it the diameter is massive and it looked like it was a lot easier to spin again something used within apps to change functions uh you can switch between the color mode or you can turn the brightness off just for a completely red faced watch like almost like a glow in the dark feature but a lot brighter there were three microphones built into it so it was a lot easier to take calls in windy environments there is a second speaker in there as well for volume so you can actually hear the watch again if you are in louder environments a cellular capability in every apple watch ultra there didn't seem to be two versions like there was with the other apple watch series 8 the uh, gps and the cellular this was just completely cellular battery life 36 hours 60 hours in battery optimization mode now i'm not sure if that was the same thing as low power mode as it was with the series 8 watch but they did mention that you can have up to 60 hours in battery optimization mode new bands for different sports as well one material it looked very much like a mat like a material like a like a nylon -y type material one looks like it was just completely made of rubber which was the ocean band and one looks like it was had like vel velcro they called them fancy names but one was nylon one was rubber and one was velcro and that was pretty much it l1 and l5 gps are now featured new compass with waypoints and better readings on there so if you are out camping for example in the wilderness you can set up waypoints on the watch itself so you can say this is where my camp is this is where the radio tower is if we get into trouble and we need to go and find the medical place to get medical supplies or something or get medical help we can go to this place set it on the compass so it had that feature as well auto detects when submerges or submerge, sorry, into water, and it automatically switches to a depth gauge, which really falls in line. They said it falls in line with professional standards. You do have the Oceanic Plus app to plan dives. Uh, it gives you info on dives and depths and times you've been underwater, etc. It does log your dive and gives you safety advice like returning to the surface too fast. I don't know the correct scientific term, but, you know, when divers... Are returning to the surface they can't go too first because of pressure and you get the bends if you go so the apple watch ultra is available for 799 dollars which is well over the price of the actual of the actual series eight but i mean what can you say it's an apple watch that does far more for 
being outdoors, but you're going to have to be someone who can really take advantage of those features, right? If you're going to be, if you're going to be jogging around your street or you're going to go down the gym, I wouldn't suggest buying an Apple Watch Ultra, you know? If you're going to be climbing mountains, go and get yourself an Apple Watch Ultra because you're going to be climbing mountains. Yeah, apart from that, <laughs> I think I think you'd be fine with the 399 Apple Watch rather than uh, an $800 watch that you're never ever going to use half the features on there because it's all basically about mountain climbing and running across the Sahara Desert. Anyway, the final watch that they did show off was the Apple Watch S. E, which is available in black, silver, and bronze. Uh, the back case has had a redesign. It's nylon composite material now. Uh, the production footprint has been reduced to over 30%, uh, over 80%, sorry, and there is a 30% larger screen. It's 20% faster than the older SE watches. Um, you do have feature on their cool family setup, which pairs watches for kids without iPhones. The Apple Watch SE comes in at $249 for the GPS and $299 for the cellular, and it's released at the same time as the Series 8 watch. So moving on to probably, I would say, the most underwhelming, super underwhelming announcement of this Apple event were the AirPods. Most advanced AirPods yet, they've called them, which, fair enough, they probably are. Uh, they feature Apple's new H2 chip, it has high bandwidth connectivity, uh, new low distortion audio driver, custom amp to power it, spatial audio's back. They said it makes you sound as if you're on stage with your favorite artists around you. Whether that's a great feature, I don't know. Uh, we have tried a similar uh, technology with Creative. Yes, it sounds okay, and for older music, it sounds quite good, bringing bring in a new lease of life to older tracks but for newer tracks that are recorded well it's it's a bit hit and miss right i'm not sure it's a feature that is going to be make or break of the new airpods you have now on their personalized spatial audio that they're calling it uh the ios 16 uses a true depth camera we'll go on to a bit of that in a minute a true depth camera to take a scan of your ear which is then meant to measure your ear canal and the size of your ear and things like that and give you the best sound possible. We have tried that again with Creative. They have got that technology on their headphones and in their app. It's okay. It's not let's say it's not the be all and an end all. You're not going to miss it if you haven't got spatial audio, but it's a feature there that Apple are trying to catch up on, I suppose, and to make them stand out a bit from the crowd. You do have active noise cancellation on there as standard. They are claiming that two times more noise is cancelled. And I would like to know, uh, or I'd like to hear them actually, and whether that white noise that is created is also gone. It's not really that white noise. I, I don't really know what it is, but it's like when you have in-ear noise cancelling headphones, if they're not very good, it's almost like an airy sound, like there's air trapped between the headphones and your ears itself. Whether that's gone, I don't know. I'd like to find out, but we'll have to get our hands on a new set of AirPods for that. Different size ear tips as well, and they're also introducing an extra small size ear tips for people with really small ears or kids um, to be able to use AirPods. You've got a new transparency mode, which is called adaptive transparency, which is designed to reduce harsher noises. And they showed an example of someone with a drill, a pneumatic drill next to the person with the uh, headphones. So it's designed to cancel that noise out, but not necessarily the traffic going on in the background or people talking. So uh, take that as you will. I'm not sure how well that could work. So there is now a sensor on the stem, although there was a sens sensor on the stem before. Uh, play, pause, and answer calls are all still there. But now there is slide touch for volume. I can't believe that they actually claimed that sliding up the headphones was blood. This is the big thing. Sliding your hands up, up the stem of your headphones to change the volume just doesn't make any sense. Um, that it's, it's not a new it's not new to the world of wireless headphones maybe to the world of apple but longer battery life they're claiming six hours of listening so great six hours again <laughs> that's not something to brag about apple that's tiny the longer battery life is six hours are you mad that's not good <laughs> that's not good at all uh, they did also say that was a 33 percent increase over old airpods if people were using airpods i feel really sorry for them they've I don't know why. It's not like I, I don't pity you if you're using AirPods, but you're falling. You've fallen for the trap that you think these are the most fashionable headphones ever. You, 
anyway, I, I'm digressing now. Don't get a pair of AirPods. Get something awesome. There is a total listening time of 33 hours uh, with the case charge. On the case as well, you've got precision finding, which helps you find the case if you have lost it, and that connects to your phone, and it plays a chime, so you can find it in your house. Think the AirTag technology. They've put that into the uh, case of the AirPods, which I think is quite good, actually. I think that's quite a nice feature. There is a speaker on the bottom of the case, and it does play tones for things like low battery. Uh, and you can use the Apple Watch charger as well to charge your AirPods. In this event, there was about recycling and reusing and things like that apple were very cheeky and said if you don't need your old iphone anymore bring it back to the shop and we'll recycle it i was just like no you'll probably sell it on to someone else and make money if you got an old iphone by the way stick it on ebay or facebook marketplace or somewhere where you can sell it and just recycle that way at least you get months of money back the new airpods are going to be costing 249 dollars uh, and then september the 23rd they are available to the end of this month and you do get free engraving included which includes your memoji engraving if that's what you want if that's your thing this is now the moment that everyone always waits for in these events and that's the iphone so up first they had the iphone 14 and 14 plus the iphone 14 is coming in at 6.1 inches and the iphone 14 plus is coming in at 6.7 inches i'm going to just call them the 14 and the plus from now on they have this new 3d looking lock screen where it looked as if the people or the, the the subject of the photo on the lock screen was almost overlapping the time. Like the time was like dipping behind their head, which is part of their new depth sensor on their camera or their true depth camera. Um, so we'll go over that in a moment, but that looked pretty fancy. There has been also some improved thermal performance. Super Retina XDR display is used. 2 million to 1 contrast. HDR, Dolby Vision, all of that kind of thing. It's all very, all very much what we know already about iPhones. Uh, nothing really too new. Ceramic shield glass on the front. They called it, what was that, space something. Aerospace aluminium aero technology, something like that means that it is super tough and the the strongest glass in mobile phones ever and you just know that it's probably not or it's just going to break <laughs> like all iPhones do the screen just breaks or they're cracked uh they come in black white blue purple and red so you've got five colors to choose from claiming that they've got the all day battery life feature as well best battery in an iphone apparently a15 bionic chip five times faster graphical performance six core cpu new neural cpu image signal processor for camera systems which is new so for the camera they did say 12 megapixel main camera 1.9 micron pixels 1.5 aperture image stabilization 49 percent improvement in low light capture the ultra wide camera they didn't really go through spec of that <laughs> they just said there's an ultra wide camera available and it takes really nice photos you know that typical apple marketing not giving you all the specs under the sun but rather showing you what the camera can do front camera uh 12 megapixel true depth camera which is what i was talking about giving you a much better quality of the subject you're taking a picture of or when you're taking selfies uh 1.9 aperture on there and 39 percent better low light performance so they talked about their deep fusion technology which can be found on iphones of late and what that does if you remember it combines it showed you all the frames stacked up and it combines frames into a single image they're now calling that the photonic engine which is to almost increase that number of images that are stacked together, uh, including like alpha channels and things like that, that saw black and white filters. So it gives you a much, much better image quality and also a much better low light performance as well. I think they said two times in the front camera and ultra wide and 2.5 times better low light performance on the main camera. The video mode, not a huge amount of changes. Uh, the only thing that they mentioned in the event was it now comes with action mode which basically looks like you're filming on a gopro it makes it look really smooth if you're chasing after the action and it also does dolby vision hdr filming as well they showed off 5g not exactly new they talked about eSIM as well digital sim card 
that eliminates a physical SIM card. The only question I really have at the moment, because of course they focused on the US market, was is this compatible with all mobile phone carriers over here in the UK? Because they said that, and I might get this completely wrong, so leave a comment down below if I do, they said that there are no more SIM trays in phones. It's all done through this digital eSIM now. That's all well and good if you're on a carrier that supports digital eSIMs, but if you're not, or I'm not sure if it's an Apple feature actually that can talk to your carrier. Uh, it's got crash detection, which is the same as the Apple Watch. So the final feature that they ran through with the 14 and the 14 Plus is their emergency SOS via satellite. What it does, if you're out stuck in the wilderness, then it will, um, again, try and find the closest satellite to talk to. If you've got no mobile phone signal, it finds the closest satellite to be able to ping off to then send messages to some kind of SOS service. So in this case, it was some kind of mountain rescue service. The people were stuck on the mountain. It pinged off a satellite, was able to um, signal the rescuers, and then they came and helped. It sends pre-written text and gives you options to choose from, uh, like, what location are you in? Oh, I'm on, a, I'm on a mountain. Oh, what's the terrain like? Oh, it's quite steep or it's rocky. Oh, is anyone injured? No, they're not. Oh, yes, they are. So you, rather than having a text conversation with these people, you're answering pre-selected texts to make it a lot easier, they said, to talk to the emergency services. Now, they also said that the the service station or the rescue station or whatever you want to call it has to be able to accept text messages because if it doesn't, you're stuffed. Or they talked about going through a relay station, which then sends them onto that mountain rescue station. So Apple said that they set them up. I'm not sure if they've set them up or they've paid someone to set them up or what a relay station, if there's a, if it's like a manned relay station or a relay station is literally just like a telephone pole that receives signals and passes them on to the closest text enabled emergency services available. I don't know. But that is a big feature of the new iPhones, apparently. So there was a lot to do with going outdoors. Now that COVID's over and the world isn't in lockdown anymore, well, I would say most of the world isn't in lockdown anymore. Apple really want you back outdoors. So a lot of features with their phones and their uh, and the watches, especially, was all to do with going outdoors. So so yeah, take that with take that as he wills but uh, that was pretty funny to see that service with the relay stations and sending texts is available in november in the us and canada not coming to the uk yet they didn't give a date on that and it's a free for two years which implies that there's going to be some kind of subscription cost after that first two years how many people do you think are going to subscribe to this mountain rescue service or whatever it was called. I can't remember the actual name of it. I'm really sorry, but I, I can't see anyone subscribing for mountain rescue call out, especially if it's expensive. I mean, unless you're hiking every day in dangerous situations to warrant paying an expensive subscription fee, how much do you reckon it's going to cost? 30 quid? 30, qu 30 quid a month to be able to notify mountain rescue that you're stuck on a mountain. So to round that off, the iPhone 14 is going to come in at $799. The iPhone 14 Plus is coming in at $899. The last phone that was announced was the iPhone 14 Pro. Of course they did, the Pro and the Pro Max. Two more models, extremely expensive. Now this time around, the colors are this stainless steel shiny, can't remember what they called it, stainless super shiny phones in black, silver, gold, white, and there was this deep purple color, which actually looked really nice. So they have this new front design called the Dynamic Island, which replaces the notch that's usually found on iPhones and usually found on other phones as well. And the camera is in there, so they mentioned that the front-facing camera is hidden within the screen, within that Dynamic Island, and they've shrunk it down and made it really technologically advanced and stuff it's there for your alerts and notifications and settings when you're inside of particular apps and the notch is designed to be able to grow and shrink and warp to all of these different shapes depending on the app or the notification that you've got so one example was they had someone calling so you were receiving a phone call and this um, notch grew to the very edges of the screen so you could see who was calling the name the number and buttons to be able to answer. When you were inside the app, uh, inside a particular app, it gave you options to be able to change features within that app. So 
If you were listening to music, for example, Apple Music, then you could click on that little notch area and it brought it down, widened it up, and you had to skip track and your music timeline and stuff like that, the particular track you were listening to. And it also then ran uh, programs in the background, like if you're waiting for Lyft, which is a taxi service in the US. I'm not sure we have Lyft over here. I've never used Lyft in the UK, but it's in America. So you could track where your drive, your Lyft driver is on that dynamic island. It looked like a really nice way of being able to have all of your notifications in this nice new, awesome, <clears throat> floaty type notification bar without it actually being called a notch. Although it was pretty much a notch. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, a, it's a modern notch, if you will. You've got Pro Display on the phones as well. Apple's Pro Display technology. Uh, screen sizes, 6.1 inch for the Pro, 6.7 inch for the Pro Max. You've got 1600 nits of peak HDR brightness with Dolby Vision. So that looks really cool. And hopefully that will bring some nice quality to your videos and there's also camera features that let you film in Dolby Vision as well. Uh, there is a max 2000 nits on its outdoor mode. That's max 2000 nits brightness on sunny days, they call it. So if it's really sunny outside, I'm not sure if this is an auto mode or you have to manually set it yourself. I'm not that familiar with uh, the iPhone interface. What made me laugh was they introduced a new always on display, loads of widgets and new information all without having to turn on your phone. And I looked at my phone and I thought, what is this? This is a, this is a, a Google Pixel 4 XL 2019 these came out maybe 2020. I'm not too sure. Anyway, they, it's years old. So look, Always on display, Apple. This is ridiculous that you're sitting there now thinking, oh, we've got the best features always on display. It's gonna, it's a game changer in the mobile phone space. We've got the best phone ever because we've got our always on display. No, it doesn't work like that, Apple. This is an old technology now. It's been done for years. So I wasn't too impressed with that and it made me laugh. iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max have the A16 Bionic chip uh, with a focus on power efficiency display and camera. Same every time. Uh, <laughs> 16 billion transistors, 4 nanometer process, uh, fastest chip in a smartphone ever, apparently. 40% faster than other comparable smartphones. I don't know if that's true. Of course, they'll need to be benchmarked against other flagship devices from other manufacturers, but... That's what they're claiming. Two high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. Same six core processor. Uh, one third of the power of the competition, apparently, that these processors take to run. Again, that will need to be benchmarked. Uh, 17 trillion operations per second. Five core GPU. Uh, 50% more memory bandwidth. And there's a new display engine in there as well. So... Very much, this is our brand new chip coming out all guns blazing. Look how fast our phone is, that kind of thing. So the new 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max do have the best cameras Apple are claiming, which of course they do. They cost the most money. Uh, Four trillion operations per photo because of that really fast uh, CPU in the phone. That they, uh, the, yeah, it's just super fast and does everything better than everyone else. Pro camera system, 48 megapixel quad pixel sensor, 65% larger than the 13 pro which is pretty big actually that's a pretty nice improvement uh the main camera has a 1.78 aperture 24 millimeter focal length a seven element lens and center shift uh optical image stabilization so it's nice and smooth images uh so they talked about the technology within their cameras and they essentially told about how they got their low light performance where they blocked groups of pixels together to be able to bring uh, an extra two times quality to a uh, low light resolution. New technology on the two times, do I say it's new technology? It's not, um, but Apple bragged about it, so uh, it must be the best technology. Two times telephoto lens, 1.78 aperture, uh, 48 millimeter focal length, seven element lens again here, and center shift optical image stabilization. It does go up to a maximum of a four times zoom, which is nice. But the two times telephoto lens takes the middle 12 megapixels of that sensor. So you don't lose any resolution or you, yes, you're losing resolution from the main camera, but not much, uh, especially if you're not going to be 
blowing up the photos to maximum size either. So, um, so yeah, you do still retain a very nice resolution in your image. Uh, same with the, the uh, ultra wide. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide with a 2.2 aperture, 13 millimeter focal length, uh, six element lens this time. So, not a huge difference. And this lens can actually be actually be used for macro photography. Uh, nine LEDs in the flash, brighter, better light capture f across the board, and all lenses have uh, can perform two times better <clears throat> in low light. So that's pretty cool. Pro Raw says that now Pro Raw can shoot at forty eight megapixel resolution, which is absolutely massive. That's really good to see. Uh, cinematic mode now supports four K thirty and four K twenty four frames per second no mention of slow motion or anything like that they were just like yeah this can now do cinema refresh rates and they claim their all-day battery life again but with all of the products now that are claiming this all-day battery life how long will it take for that battery to start dying and people complaining that's it that is the apple event rounded up sorry if this video went on for a little bit longer i started ranting and getting distracted by various different things i'd written down here but uh yeah let us know in the comments down below what you thought about the apple event if you watched it or if you watched this roundup let us know what you think of that as well with all that said thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy this video please leave a like button let us know in the comments as well what you think about this style of video talking about the notes i've made of a particular product or an event is it something that's better than Go and watch one of our other videos, which is a scripted review video, and tell me which one you prefer, me just talking or me actually giving a scripted written review. Let me know. As I say, leave a like, comment on the video, subscribe if you want to, to keep up with all of our other videos, and hopefully more like this in the future, and we'll see you in another video soon.